is that Pope Francis would be willing to facilitate dialogue to help stop the war in Ukraine. The vast majority of the Ukrainian population identifies as Orthodox Christian, and while their religious leaders have publicly condemned the invasion, recent statements by the head of the Orthodox Church, Russian Patriarch Kirill, openly supported Moscow's invasion. This has splintered the worldwide Orthodox Church and is raising fears of religious strife. It's 2020 and around 50 kilometers from Moscow, a cathedral is being inaugurated in honor of the armed forces. Okay, so in this cathedral, you see this mural. If you look right over here, right here, you'll notice, I think you can see it right where, right, right over here. With that. Oh, I have to go, I have to zoom out a little bit. Okay, you can see it right there. Right here, can you see this here? Where the mouse is here, where this image is? Okay, if you look right there, right there, that is a, uh, that, what that is, it's this here. And they're with the Japanese, it has to do with something with the Japanese, but that logo, I was looking at that logo, at that sign, and that's exactly what it is. That's what it is right there. If I can get the off of the shade here. Okay, it has this mark here. It, this it kind of looks like a, like almost like a five. Here, this here is like a four, and here's a slanted line, slanted line. And what? And I was looking at that, and I was asking, that looks like a swastika. But when I had a real close look at it, that's what it looks like. But if you take a look at it, you can certainly see that you can easily make a Z and an N out of it. And this has to do with the Z sign that's on their, their military tanks. And Z is always for, is, is for Zion, and N is also for Nazi. I believe that this sign, this sign is a sort of a swastika. It's a, it's a type of uh, genocide symbol against Zion. And you notice how Putin is calling the Ukraine a bunch of Nazis. And so this here is kind of a, it's just a, the, the Z was just taken out of here. And it's just that type of a symbol. That is their military doctrine. The church here uh, wrote, uh, the church uh, leaders are conditioning the church leaders are conditioning the people to accept the nation's military doctrine. A nation set on war, Cain against Abel. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that Russia is the nation of Cain. It's, that, that's what he showed me. And that's what's happening. We're seeing... Um, Cain, once again warring against his brother, against his brother Abel. So what is happening at the end times, what's happening is that the children of Lucifer, Satan, the devil attack the people of, of Jesus Christ after they were, you know, weakened by the, the power of death of Lucifer. Okay, we're at the ends of the earth. And the situation, you know, is getting, is, is a very, very uh, strong spiritual uh, warfare against the church. And the church is in tribulation. That's what tribulation is all about. And as God says that in the end times, I will cause Jacob to loosen his hand I'll, lose, I'll, I'll cause you to lose your grip, loosen your hand from your inheritance. That's the physical inheritance of Jacob. And that's what's happening. And But you see here, in Jeremiah, uh, chapter, chapter 49, in verse 19 to 20, it says, Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of the Jordan. 
And so this, the swelling of the Jordan, the Jordan, there's two sides to the Jordan. And, and the one side, the side of the east of Jordan, is the side of persecution, the Philistines. It's the thickets of the Jordan against the inhabitants of the strong. So, so behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of the Jordan against the habitation of the strong, which are the ones, which, the ones that have the dominion. Daniel chapter 7. Because they have the blessing of Christ, they believe in Christ, the resurrection of Christ, which is Ukraine. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her, which is Jesus Christ? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore, and this is also the third and fourth dimension, therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. So with the least of the flock, he makes their habitations desolate. Why? Because they come out against them. Because of this. Because of what's happening in Ukraine. They're, 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 his heart is set against the covenant. And he was given Ukraine for that reason. Not only that reason alone, but for the fact that uh, it was for the movement of the New World Order. It was to appease Vladimir Putin to make him feel good. Uh, it, was, it was a gift given to him in order to come in along with the Western leg, with the march of nations of the West. And they, and, and what happened was, is that Vladimir Putin, he basically, they already made plans. And so they went with it, but their plans is to destroy the New World Order of the West. They couldn't, they can't appease him with gifts. You know, as the scriptures say, if a serpent bites you, you know, for no good reason, what good is there in a charmer? So, here in uh, Jeremiah, God says in verse 19, that I will suddenly make him run away from her, from the, from the mouth of the dragon. And here we find in Revelation chapter 12, 14 to 17, is just that. And this is the time when... God says that he is going to give the, the woman, he's going to give her wings to go into the wilderness where, they, where she is to be nurtured for a time, times, and half a time. In Revelation 12, 14. Uh, Revelation 12, uh, 14 to 17. And the, two, and, and the women were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and half a times from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to, to be carried away by the flood. And so here is what is happening. The, 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 the flood is, the, is an impassable river. It's a river. It's just from the devil. It's a call right to war. It's a call. Uh, to attack. It's a call to swallow up the woman, right, in the belly of the, the mouth of the eater. The serpent cast out, uh, um, out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And so this is the, this is the gospel, this is the believing in Jesus Christ. This is the, the preaching of the gospel, the pouring out of the Spirit uh, of, uh, onto all flesh, to the, the preaching of the gospel. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so the devil cannot touch his elect, and what do they do? They go back, they turn, he turns back to make war against the remnant of, of God. Jeremiah 50 verse 8 says that to be like he goats among the flock. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goats before the flock. Russia is, a, is part of Edom. 
that's Esau's kingdom. And that is what is ruling over the world. Here in verse 20, hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their inhabitants desolate with them. The devil turns around, the devil attacks them because they're church. They belong to the church of Christ. And these do not. So who is the real Nazi here? Well, let's take a look here. And this is what how this tightly entwined Orthodox Christianity and politics are in Russia. The influence of the Orthodox Church leader is hard to underestimate. Moscow's patriarch Kirill has made no bones about where his loyalty lies. He's spoken of Russia's opponents as evil forces, portraying Ukraine as a nation succumbing to what he calls sinful Western practices, such as gay pride parades. So this is the, 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 the flood that comes out of the mouth of the serpent. Now, he, they're right about the gay pride parades. They're not wrong about it, but you don't, you know, go ahead and you don't kill people over it. You don't rape women and children and and go and turn their city into into rubble. This is the this is the uh, the covenant of Christ we're in now. We're in a different covenant. In Ukraine, some 30 million Orthodox Christians are split between a self-governing church and the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, which is part of the Moscow Patriarchate. But since the invasion... So it's part of the Mo Moscow Patriarchate, patronism of the state. This is church and state. And so you see where the... Uh, how the people are being subdued by the leaders. Rival leaders have been united in their condemnation of Russia. With some churches left not even able to provide a sanctuary from the assault, many clerics in Ukraine are now joining calls for a complete split from the Moscow church. So it's a third and a third and a third. They, they're, now they're, you see, now they're, they're being separated, being divided. They're basically running away. And while Kirill preaches justification, Ukraine's four and a half million Catholics are looking to the head of their church to wage peace. But while Pope Francis has called it a war which sows death, destruction and misery, he has neither named Vladimir Putin as the aggressor, nor appealed to Kirill to intervene on the side of peace. So he hasn't even, the white Pope, which is a Jesuit, he never even condemned the war, called, saying that war uh, Vladimir Putin is a war criminal. So he's, once again, he's siding with Russia. The Lord's ch uh, Church, briefly explain why. Very much so, because the, pre the, the, the process of conversion of, of a Druze, or the process of conversion of the Slavic world, really to some degree, starts in Ukraine, uh, coming from the south, coming from Greek Orthodox churches, Cappadocia and Turkey. But it's really, uh, uh, it's really the Ukraine what opens, so to say, the gates of the Slavic world to Christianity. For the Russians, the Ukrainian church is actually very important, and it has been one that has been very close to the Moscovite Patriarchate. Uh, but obviously, Kirill is also... So, the, the, the Ukrainian church is well, even responsible for this division that's ha of the church that's happening in, in Russia. It's just the hearts of people. The hearts of the people. And that's what, what is causing division from, in the people that are uh, in Russia that are parting out from the church, they're running away from it because Christ reigns in their conscience. Very divisive figure, now for really quite a long time. So he has actually uh, managed over the last couple of years to break relations 
to several of his orthodox peers. Mm. So could we regard uh, Kiev as the, as the founding place, really, of the Russian Orthodox Church, isn't it? And could we regard this war as, as Putin's war to reclaim the Jerusalem, if you will, of the Orthodox Church? Look, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind, at least following sort of the cycle, the cycle of news and explanations, that there is a very strong messianic uh, you know, message uh, being being essentially, uh, you know, deployed. It's not really coming across when you look at politicians and when you listen to the news, but it's certainly there when you actually start to hear what people are saying in different parishes, in different churches, and so on. Uh, it's obvious that the split of the Ukrainian church, which now has actually three-way split, uh, <clears throat> is seen as basically a runaway a runaway congregation for the church in Moscow. But I think that it's also the case that the proximity of orthodoxy with Russian sentiments of identity tend to actually look at Ukraine as something that is essentially an escaping child of the of the Rus meat of the Russian uh, Rus meat of the Russian uh, uh, in, in, not not empire but certainly imperium sort of the the, the space of influence. Religious affairs with one of Martin Guck there. Thank you, Martin. So that's that's what's happening. Uh, you can see the impact. There's major, major impact happening uh, with this war regarding a great division that's that is happening. It's it's a great movement. It's causing, and that's what it's caused to do. That's what it's to do, and that's what we're witnessing. We're witnessing the these scriptures, the the, the Bible scriptures coming to life. This is end time events happening.